Right, let me start the presentation. Hello, I am Naoki Kimura from the University of Tokyo. I am presenting on our research titled Sotto Voce and Ultrasound Imaging Based Silent Speech Interaction Using Deep Neural Networks. So we will begin with a demonstration video which provides an overview of this study. Here is a station you recently listened to, orchestral music from Amazon Music. Okay, as seen in the, in the video, when I move mouse uh, without actually emitting the voice, uh, images from the oral cavity are obtained uh, through ultrasound. A neural network then converts this image to speech. The generated voice operated Alexa. In this demonstration, the generated sound was amplified through a speaker. However, if you input the voice directly into the speaker, you can operate Alexa without any voice. Here is a station so, you recently listened to, orchestral music from Amazon Music. So our research is for silent speech interaction, which operates a voice user interface without a voice. So we will start with the significance of silent speech interaction. With advancement in speech processing technology, we can actually ask questions to device and receive answers from them. But nobody here right now uh, would ask uh, what is silent speech. Moreover, it is also difficult to use voice to user interface in public place using information such as house addresses or passwords because they may lead to a leak of privacy. So. And uh, furthermore, and most importantly, those who cannot speak due to the physical reasons, such as those who do not have vocal cords, uh, cannot use uh, voice, in voice interface. Thus, the more widespread the voice interface, the more of a struggle we appear. In fact, both these problems are caused by essential condition of voice interface, uh, requiring speech. S sorry. So. Therefore, we need to develop a voice interaction without the voice. Okay, I explain our basic idea for your eyes and silent speech. The vocalization process is broadly divided into two, two steps. The vocal cords create a buzzer sound and tone, in this case pronunciation, is created by the shape and movements of oral cavities. Finally, the sound is discharged outside of speech. Therefore, uh, pronunciation should be estimated from the shape and movements of uh, our cavity. This video was captured by MRI, but MRI is not available for wearable usage, so we use the ultrasound. When a ultrasound probe is attached in the direction from the jaw to the mouth, we can capture these images. Alexa, play music. Alexa, play music. Okay. So we want to estimate speech, uh, uh, speech audio from the image and neural network. Uh, but to use network, I have to, or we have to correct the data set for training. So using microphone for recording voices and by speaking while holding the ultrasound probe, we can correct the data set with ultrasound image and voice. For example, we could obtain the sound and shape of the mouse produced when Alex play music was pronounced. Like Alexa, like, like. Okay, we then trained the neural network to estimate speech using the ultrasound images only. After the training, we reproduced the same mouth shape and, as that in the data, set, data, data used for training, but with no sound. Okay, neural network estimates sound to be uttered from images. As a result, you can make speech without leaking sound outside. This is our approach. Okay. Various approaches are used to realize sign speech for us uh, so far. For example, auto ego uses uh, electromyography to estimate internal voice. However, this can be termed uh, command detection instead of speech, and thus rewarded as a gesture recognition using muscles around the mouth. <coughs> Sorry. Um, silent voice, a study I particularly like, uh, uses ingressive speech and allows spe speech recognition with a silent voice. However, it requires 
the user to hold a device in front of their mouth, and it also requires special skills. Lip Interact tracks the user's lips with a front camera of the mobile device and guesses the command through a conversational neural network. Although methods using the camera, uh, RGB camera, are very simple, but you have to somehow locate the camera at the distance from the front of your face. So Lip Interact relies on the user's hand to create in this distance. As water sound probes are mainly used in medical applications, so they are often sold as a device like this. However, in fact, they can be crafted like this. Thus, the even existing products can be scaled down to 2 cm by 3 cm. If it's designed specifically, it could be even smaller. Okay. And the design of ultrasound probe is very flexible, so ultrasound is compact and flexible. So ultimately, wearable devices like this can be designed using these features. It has a miniaturized ultrasound probe and open an earphone. This is just a prototype, but completely feasible. This will allow you to always ask your smart assistant without being noticed by others. Although it is not the result of this study, but in our ongoing one, the network can be driven by Google Mobile TPU. Okay, research on lip reading and synthesizing audio from images from uh, images of face or lip leaps using deep neural uh, deep learning are similar to ours. There are a few but some combined uh, sorry, there are few but some combined with the sound image and deep learning. However, the combination of with the sound image and conversational neural network is the first as far as I, we know. And in addition to evaluate in addition to evaluation on data set with voice, it is unique that actual silent speech was performed. This is our system that estimates audio using the images. The neural network takes a time series of ultrasonic images and outputs sound representation vectors, in our case, male scale spectrum. And finally, the output vectors are converted to the actual sound waves by the Griffin Lim method. This conversion process involves two neural networks, Net2 and Net, Net, uh, sorry, Net1 and Net2, call, we call. The goal of Net1 is image to audio feature translation. It consists of four convolutional net layers and two free connected layers. Each 2D convolutional network was followed by a dropout and batch normalization to prevent overfitting. Then each, layers, uh, each layer was activated using Likri Ledu. Finally, it generates a 64 dimensional feature vector which restores to a uh, 20 millisecond of audio. Net1 was trained using a data set of approximately 50 hundred utterance of Alex commands, which were collected by participants. The speech of the data set was encoded into the spectrum and used as a target data. Our system is user dependent. Data sets should be corrected and network trained for each user. We estimated each acquired piece as the wind shift each, each generates the output of 64 dimensional feature vector. These were arranged to create a sequence of audio feature vectors. We then used the Griffin Learning method to recover the speech. This graph shows the learning process on net one. This is a grand truth. Can you hear? Alexa, what's the weather like? Sorry, too loud. And uh, as learning pro progresses, the generated result approaches the ground truth. Alexa, what the weather like? 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 Yes, Alexa, what's the weather like? And Net2 improves the generalized speech on per command basis. The input is audio feature vector output from Net1, and the training data is audio feature vectors of ground truth. This is the difference between the Net1 output and Net2 output. Alexa, 
Alexa, play music. Alexa, play music. Although the difference Alexa, is. <coughs> Although the difference is small to the human ear, but probably probability of Alexa reaction increases. So this table shows how often Alexa reacted to the uh, generated sound. The test data used here were obtained dur during the audible speech, so it's not silent speech. As we heard in the previous slide, the generated speech is understandable to humans. However, the generated speech is different from humans' low voice, so. Alexa recognition rate is not very high. The recognition rate will be improved by tuning the recognition using generated speech. Since the speech generation using test data was successful, the actual end-to-end -end silent speech was uh, examined. In this case, I mouth the speech command without actually emitting the voice. At first, I could not speak well at all. <laughs> The sound is corrupted. And by repeating the action several times, I recognized certain tips and began to generate it, uh, create clear voice. It said, Alex play jazz. And finally, we confirmed that smart device could be operated using oversighted speech. you recently listened to or kept it's 7:52 p.m. I will introduce some of these tips here the first is uh, exhale a little when speaking completely without exhaling air what we usually imagine as a lip sync it is difficult to reproduce the same mouth movement as that training data which allows emitting a voice. So we had to exhale little air to get close. This is uh, without any breath. Instead of this, our uh, voice is in, uh, this is a uh, speech with exhaling little air. Voice is emphasized more than in reality by post-processing for, for this presentation. The noise re released by exhaling this be uh, supposed to uh, suppress, sorry, suppressed to 40 decibel or less. Furthermore, it is necessary to exaggerate thumb movement when uttering consonant. So this is a basic. Instead, uh, for example, when saying, Alexa, what's the weather like, we have to emphasize the movements of K in like in the end, in, in the end of the sentence. No worry, it does not require much tongue movement, but when generating silent speech, it is important. This time, we could call, uh, sorry, sorry, can you hear? So I exaggerated the K in the like, okay. <clears throat> This time, we could compensate the AI's failure to some extent using these tips and, in other words, uh, human training. However, the fact that the system did not produce good results, even if it succeeded with the test data, leads to an important implication. So that is the difference between audible speech and silent speech. Machine learning requires the test data and train data to be in the same distribution. So far, it has been assumed that there is no difference in mouth movement between audible speech and silent speech. So, <clears throat> meaning that distribution match. Therefore, research of face to audio or lip to audio or the sound image to audio was applied to a uh, silent speech problem. But that may not be the case. At least in our experiment, we needed to humans effort to get clear voice. Alexa, play music. This is uh, audio speech. And Speech. Alexa, play music. So, although we have not yet evaluated strictly what 
what our observation show is that work for image to audio for silent speech may not actually go to the realization of silent speech directory. Okay, these are the uh, future work we have to do. Uh, first, there is uh, insufficient speakable vocabulary now. Only five phrases, 14 words could be used in this study. Even in our ongoing research, we have been able to use approximately 15 phrases and 14 words. And secondly, in our case, the gap between speech and silent speech was filled, with, filled through the human training. However, this gap could, be, could also be filled by developing new methods of creating a data set or uh, by normalization with image processing. Finally, this research is not intended to exclude other modalities, combining information from electromyographies or accelerometers and NAM microphone may improve the quality. Identifying the most useful combination of these modalities can be the subject of future research. Okay. In our ongoing study, we have stopped using the second neural network, NET2. Uh, since the NET2 generated the speech on per command basis, so real-time generation was not possible. Thus, it is now possible to operate almost in real-time like this. And ultimately, we aim to create a system that enables the user to speak with their mouth closed. Uh, actually, only moving the mouth without making any sound uh, looks a bit strange. So, although I cannot speak clear words yet, but I am to be able to speak like this. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, it's a bit hard to hear because uh, hard to hear the question uh, because of the reaction, uh, because of the echo, and I'm not good at listening to the English. So, I'm happy if you speak slowly, question or have talk with me after the session. So, any questions? Thank you. Hi, we have time for one quick question. So, if you could state your name and affiliation. Um, as the student volunteer, we'll hand you a microphone for whoever wants to ask a question. Oh. Hi, um, I'm, I'm Pejman from University of Manchester. Um, I was just wondering, uh, is, is the ultimate goal to sort of uh, control your devices with, with silent speaking so that there would be no image to audio, you would just speak and somehow this would be converted to messages that your Alexa or whatever device would just understand what you're saying without actually any audio being there. Um, sorry, I didn't uh, understand the question, sorry. I, could we talk directly after the session? Yeah, sure, okay. Thank, thank you. We have time for one quick question, I think. Gianluca Memoli, University of Sussex. Thanks for your talk. So my question is, did you use gel on top of the transducer? And if you didn't, uh, did you consider using Doppler imaging? Sorry, did you use what? The gel. Gen. Ultrasonic gel on top of the transducer. Okay. Okay. Ah. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.